Hello on for person, this is Anton, and today we're going to be discussing a somewhat recent discovery of a very strange contrail-like shape discovered in a pretty well-known galaxy. The galaxy you see right here referred to as Messier 66 or NGC 3627. And so extremely recently scientists that were studying this galaxy identified something really peculiar. Something that basically resembles a galactic contrail as if something very massive and something very powerful flew through this galaxy, leaving a trail behind. And that something is most likely some kind of a supermassive black hole. And even though we normally imagine these black holes to be in centers of various galaxies, in the last few years there's been a few studies that we're going to be discussing today that showed us that sometimes these black holes can also be outside of galactic centers, and in some cases can be flying through these galaxies very fast. Which actually confirms some of the previous predictions in regards to these wandering supermassive black holes. So essentially these homeless black holes wandering in darkness between galaxies because they were probably ejected from various galactic centers because of various galactic collisions. And so let's talk about some of these concepts in more detail and discuss this very recent, very exciting discovery. But obviously this is not a new concept. These wandering or runaway massive black holes have always been a kind of a fundamental concept, essentially explaining why sometimes we don't see any black holes in some galaxies, such as the nearby Triangulum Galaxy, and of course answering the question of how a typical galactic collision usually ends. In this case, it basically ends by kicking out one of these central black holes. But the thing is here, we still have to be kind of careful. One of the more recent exciting observations was actually this. There was a very peculiar wake or peculiar contrail that scientists thought might have been formed by a massive black hole that then created star formation in its wake. But the thing is, despite this being super exciting, it may have been an incorrect explanation. As a matter of fact, within just a few weeks, this was proposed to be just a very skinny galaxy and not a wake at all. So here this was just a kind of a perspective error. We might have been just looking at a galaxy edge on, which essentially made it appear as a single line. And so in reality, trying to find evidence for these wandering or runaway massive black holes has actually been kind of difficult. And that's despite the fact that we expect a lot of them all over the place. For example, various simulations of our own galaxy predict that there should be at least 10 even inside the galaxy itself. Not all of them are going to be supermassive, some of them might only be intermediate mass, but they should be here and they should be traveling in all directions. And especially if galactic collisions eventually result in black holes joining as well, which will usually produce a massive kick, causing the more massive black hole to eventually escape. And so understanding these wanderers is kind of crucial, mostly because they serve as critical laboratories for studying how massive black holes form and grow, and how they evolve over time. But still, for many years, we only had marginal evidence, and most of this was very theoretical. And so let's, I guess, start with this recent discovery first, and discuss some of the previous discoveries from the last few years as well. Because in order to confirm this, we of course need to see direct evidence that can either be seen through the black hole actively consuming surrounding material and producing a lot of emissions, or by maybe seeing some kind of a contrail that's left behind. But we don't really expect all black holes to be actively accreting mass and producing emissions, which makes them extremely difficult to detect. But when the runaway black holes moving at supersonic speeds violently interact with a lot of gas in the galaxy, they do leave behind a very distinctive trail. Which of course takes us to this galaxy NGC 3627. And so here, based on the observations from the James Webb and the ALMO radio telescope, the researchers discovered something they did not expect. And it can even be seen to some extent in this image by just looking at the emissions of carbon monoxide. It appeared to have some kind of a giant contrail inside the spiral of the galaxy itself. And by the way, this is actually one of the closer galaxies to us at approximately 31 million light years away. So technically this is one of our neighbors. But compared to other spirals, this was definitely different. It contained this very narrow linear structure that was visible both in the mid-infrared and in radio emissions. And so here this was shown as both carbon monoxide gas and a lot of dust particles. But what's remarkable here is its sheer size. This was approximately 20,000 light years in length and at least 700 light years wide. With this very bizarre feature actually being kind of consistent with theoretical models, that involves some kind of a flyby of a very massive compact object. And especially an object flying through the galactic disk 
and creating something referred to as gravitational focusing. And so here the resulting compression results in a massive shock wave, evidenced by supersonic turbulence found within a trail and visible at approximately 10 km per second in these observations. So essentially here a lot of dust and a lot of gas seems to have this unusual turbulence that would be difficult to explain. And based on the gravitational wake theories, whatever produced this must have been at least 10 million solar masses in mass and was also moving at at least 300 km per second. And that's because this contrail is also collimated, or essentially very long and very straight, and also seems to be relatively thin in size. Though obviously we don't really see the source of all of this, Whatever was responsible could be either some kind of a massive black hole or maybe a dense nucleus of some kind of a very faint dwarf galaxy. So right now scientists cannot definitively distinguish between these possibilities. But this is still a very exciting discovery because this is a very well known galaxy that we've actually known about for hundreds of years. It was originally discovered by the famous Charles Messier. And this galaxy is of course relatively close, so all of this can be studied very thoroughly and that means that we might be able to find this black hole or the source of this after all. Either way this is definitely one of the more exciting discoveries when it comes to these wandering objects. But intriguingly in the last few months this is not the only such discovery. As a matter of fact because the telescopes now have improved so much, researchers have now started finding signs of these black holes in many different galaxies including dwarf galaxies. With one such example coming from a dwarf galaxy known as Manga 12772-12704. And here we had very strong evidence for an accreting supermassive black hole that instead of being in the center was a few thousand light years away. And so here there was a very strong confirmation that this black hole was either kicked out from the center or just decided to escape for some unknown reasons. With all this potentially happening relatively recently, and more importantly confirming that black holes don't have to be in the center in order to produce a lot of emissions. In this case even wandering black holes can still accrete a lot of gas and can even still grow in size as they travel across various galaxies and a lot of intergalactic space. So basically once kicked out these black holes don't stop growing because they can still absorb a lot of mass if they find themselves in a very dense environment. But more importantly scientists can now identify signs of these black holes super far away even from very distant quasars. Here the quasar known as 3C186 located at a redshift of 1.1 seems to contain a really massive black hole, at least billion solar masses in mass. And once again this black hole is not entirely in the center. It seems to be approximately 33,000 light years away from the center, implying that it was probably kicked out. And specifically it received some kind of a violent super kick because once again it has a tremendous mass which means that a lot of energy was required to suddenly make this giant move which must have been the result of a very violent merger between two very very massive black holes. The collision that very likely produced a tremendous amount of energy and gravitational waves and possibly even completely transformed the galaxy where this happened. But obviously because this is kind of far away from us it will be difficult to find out additional details. Either way, right now this is the timeline scientists proposed for this and what they think must have happened. And so the first event that happened was the black hole murder event, something that very likely started a few million years ago. And then approximately 10,000 years ago, the black hole turned on and became active and started to produce a lot of radiation. But sometimes black holes announce themselves in a slightly different way, such as for example in this image. We've discussed this a few months back, but here this particular runaway black hole announced itself by accidentally destroying a nearby star. This produced what's known as a TDE or a tidal disruption event. And because this TDE was not in the center once again, here we're pretty certain this was a massive black hole that was also kicked out at some point in the past. Which in essence means that there are definitely at least several ways for scientists to identify these bizarre giants and it doesn't always involve the same effects. And so sometimes when these black holes get kicked out, they don't just leave alone, they do actually keep some of the gravitationally bound stars and some of the gas as well. And in some cases either the gas starts accreting making these black holes extremely bright or like in this case at some point the star falls into the black hole and gets destroyed producing a TDE. So here basically we have a black hole surrounded by a bunch of stars and a bunch of gas, almost like some kind of a miniature galaxy. And though similar in size and luminosity to certain other objects such as globular clusters, they still appear to be very different 
mostly because the stars in these objects seem to move ridiculously fast, much much faster than anywhere else. And so here by measuring this velocity dispersion, we can then definitively confirm that this is a BRC or a black hole recoil cluster and not some kind of a global cluster instead. And so in terms of theories, right now this is the best way to identify these objects and to find these wandering giants. But in general, based on all of this research, this does have some profound implications for our understanding of the universe. Now first of all, it once again challenges some of the early universe models, and specifically models when it comes to black hole growth. Before it was always assumed that usually black holes grow when they're essentially in the center of various galaxies, but become inactive once they get kicked out. Here the evidence shows that this is not the case. Black holes can still grow even outside of the center, and they might even be able to feed continuously for a very long time, possibly even much faster than they would grow in the center of a galaxy. At the same time, we also now know that even displaced black holes can produce very similar emissions to a typical AGN. Or basically, some black holes not in the center of the galaxy can also produce ridiculously powerful radio jets and produce very powerful emissions that can even sustain themselves for thousands if not millions of years. Previously, it was always believed to be only possible in the center of the galaxy. But I guess more importantly, based on some of the recent predictions, scientists now believe that quite a lot of these black holes exist in most galaxies out there. So for the Milky Way galaxy, scientists currently predict at least 12 such objects inside the galactic halo of the Milky Way. But intriguingly, they also seem to be much more common in the past. As a matter of fact, there were more wandering black holes compared to supermassive black holes in the center. And it was only in the last few billions of years that most galaxies settled, with most central black holes growing in size, whereas the wandering black holes mostly remained the same. But since scientists believe that these black holes are pretty common and we should be seeing a lot of them everywhere, if this is correct, we're actually going to be detecting more and more of them, because modern telescopes, especially radio telescopes, have now become very powerful. And so if this prediction is correct, we're probably going to have even more such discoveries in the next few months. And we'll probably discuss them on the channel because this is kind of fascinating. Especially if such black hole is actually discovered in the vicinity of the Milky Way. And by the way, this image here is the official prediction. Researchers do expect to find this many massive black holes near us. But until we get these official confirmations and more discoveries, that's pretty much all I wanted to mention. Thank you for watching, subscribe, come back tomorrow to learn something else, support this channel on Patreon where you can find additional videos, videos without any ads and can DM it directly, or by joining a channel membership that grants you early access and a few additional videos. Alternatively, you can also buy the wonderful person t-shirt in the description below. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye bye.